Let's go through joining a classroom dashboard and all of the various settings we can apply. To join a classroom, click on the green Start Class button of whichever class we'd like to join. Once in the classroom dashboard, you can change the settings by going to the Settings button in the upper right hand corner of the dashboard. The first setting you'll see is Open Enrollment with the option for Open or Closed. Having Open Enrollment set to Open simply means that a student is able to manually join your class from their own device. So for example, if I was a student, I'd be able to go onto my device, enter in the class ID of at josh-demo2 and join this classroom. If I had this set to closed, I as an educator would need to approve the student for joining this classroom. And I'd have the option to deny them as well. Below open enrollment, we have the ability to change our class name and also change our, our chat name. So in the one-to-one -one student to educator chat, I can uh, basically change my screen name as far as how I appear to the student when I'm having that conversation. Uh, below that, we have the option to set the max number of open tabs. This will limit the amount of open tabs that a student can have on their Chromebook or Chrome browser. So to do this, I can use these up and down arrows to set this number. So if I said uh, there's only three sites that you're going to uh, need to be able to open today, I can set this number to three and basically restrict students from being able to open up 15 different tabs and um, and explore, free, explore freely. Below the max number of open tabs, we have email report settings. Uh, here we can configure which emails we'd like to receive after a class has concluded. Uh, first option here is email attendance. This report is gonna send a report to you of who connected to your classroom during that class time. Below that, you'll see detailed activity report. This is basically gonna give you a little bit more detail as far as what happened during your class. It'll summarize the activity feed for you, show you what sites certain students hit at certain times, uh, and really paint that better picture of, of what happened during that class period. To turn these on or off, we just select the box here on whether or not we'd like to receive these emails. Below the email settings, we have some notifications. Um, same idea here as far as turning these on or off in terms of what we'd like to be alerted to during class. We can, if we receive a chat, if a student joins or leaves our classroom, or if we'd like some best practices on how to use Borderless Classroom, we can turn these notifications on or off here in the settings. Below this, we have an option for display names. We can choose whether we want our names to be displayed as a full name or as a username. This will change uh, how the student name appears in their, in their thumbnail view from the tiles in the dashboard. So again, if we want their, their complete full name in there or we just want their username, we can select that option from the drop down here. Underneath that, we have our class list. If you're using Google Classroom or syncing with an SIS, you won't need to worry too much about this, but it is always here if you need to make quick changes. Uh, if you're doing manual class entry, you can do that here as well. You can upload a class list from this yellow button right next to the class list um, header. You'll see some text along the right-hand side that'll give you some directions in terms of the format that this file will need to be in. Otherwise, if you're gonna make individual changes uh, on a one-by-one -one basis, you can do that below. Uh, to add a single student to your classroom, click on the green Add Student button. Enter in the student username under the student column. You can also assign a nickname to that student. Uh, this is another way to change the display name that will appear within the tile. So if a student has a certain name they'd like to go by rather than the, the full name or the username, you can enter that in here uh, in the nickname column. Once that's entered in, click on the save icon to the right with the check mark uh, to save that student on your class list. If you need to make changes to any of these students later, you can do that through this edit button. Uh, for example, if I wanted to change John Kennedy's nickname, I could click on this edit button, come into the nickname column, and change this to whatever I wanted John Kennedy to appear as uh, instead of this full name. Again, once I've got that entered in, hit save, and, and that change will be confirmed. Moving on from the class list, we have the class schedule. We have a couple options here in terms of how we'd like to schedule our classes, the first of which being uh, setting a default class length. Same idea here as far as when we first made that class and setting the time that we want this class to meet for. Come in here, enter in the amount of minutes that this class is gonna uh, take place for, uh, and we can save that and that'll keep the students forced in for that length of time. If we don't wanna do the default class length, we can also schedule classes. So if we know that we have a class that meets every Monday from eight to nine in the morning, we can click on this clock icon, select our start time of 8 a.m. If I can find that here, we'll put 8 a.m. as the start time. You can also enter in the end time of 9 a.m. So same thing, find 9 a.m. in the drop down, And you'll see there, we've got 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. entered as our start and end time. Uh, once we save that, basically this class will be scheduled to auto start at 8 a.m. Um, 
students will be forced in for that uh, that 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. period. Uh, right when 9 a.m. hits, the class will automatically be ended and students will be automatically released and, and free to join their next classes. Below the class scheduling, we have an option for co-teachers. This allows you to have multiple educators with same controls over a class period. So if you have student teachers or para pros or substitutes that need access to your class controls, you can add them here in the co-teachers section. Uh, co-teachers will have all of the same controls as a main teacher. The only thing they will not be able to do is change the class settings. So a co-teacher wouldn't be able to get to this settings page and change your class schedule or anything like that, but they'll still be able to do all the filtering, all the tab control, um, all the browser control as well. To add, add an educator in here, click on the add new record button with the plus icon, enter in that educator's username, and then click on the orange update button to save them um, in this field here. Below co-teachers, we have some a class notes section. This works with a notepad to save any notes for the next time you run this classroom. If there's anything you need to, needed to see for later, you can enter it into this class notes um, text box uh, and save that for the next time you run this class. Uh, finally, the last thing that you will see within this section is this block list. Um, if we did have this class set to closed enrollment and a student tried to join and we denied them access, that student name would get populated into this block list to, you, to allow you to see who you've denied access to um, at the end of any given class. Those are the options that are gonna appear um, from the settings section within the classroom dashboard. The other thing I wanna cover here is outlines. And to get to outlines, we'll do that from the home screen here. Um, so back at our home screen of where we're able to select which class we're gonna join, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, this button that says classroom outlines. If we click on that, we'll be presented with a window of all of our currently created outlines. And you'll also see in the upper left hand corner, uh, a button to create a new outline. If we click on this button, we'll be presented with the options that we wanna um, set into this outline before we create it. First thing we'll need to do is give it a name. So we'll make a training outline here. Next, we'll give it a description, whatever this outline is gonna be used for. Below that, we have filter settings. So this will allow you to choose if you'd like um, your outline to either block all sites except for the ones that you wanna allow, or allow all sites except for the ones that you want to block. So you have the option here from the drop down to select between those. I'm going to choose the option to block all sites except for the ones that I allow. And I'm going to come in here and enter in my allowed sites. So for demo purposes here, I'm going to say I want to allow access to Google and we'll do aristotlek12.com. Enter in both of those sites and hit enter and you'll see both of my allowed sites have been populated into this text box here. Below that, we have tab control. Uh, this allows you some additional controls in terms of if there's any site that you wanna automatically open for these students. Um, so if we are doing this block all sites except for the ones that I wanna allow, I could say, I, I could enter in those same two sites to, for, in the sites to open and say, okay, when, when you join the class, uh, automatically I wanna um, put you on these two sites. So let me get aristotlek12.com. Uh, you can also set a tab limit here. So again, if, if these are the only two sites that you need, um, students will be blocked from any sites other than these two. But if you wanted to just make sure, you could say maximum of two tabs, or if you're, you're setting this up differently, uh, set that tab limit here to whatever number you needed that to be at. And the last option you'll see here is close all tabs. Um, basically what this will do, if a student had previously opened tabs uh, running before you apply this outline, closing all tabs will, will close those for them. If you had this set to no, it would leave those tabs open in the background so that when the outline is, is removed from them, they can go back to those tabs. Um, I'm going to leave this set to yes to close any previously open tabs that the students had open. And I'm going to save this outline by clicking the, the save outline button in the bottom right. And you'll see my, my training outline gets added to my list here. And then to apply this outline, basically what I need to do is I need to go back into my classroom. Um, we need to put some students in here to be able to apply it. So I'm gonna just click that manual force join button. And once these students get in here, you'll see uh, from my class controls options, uh, this apply outline button. If I click on this button, it'll pop up a, again, a list of all of our previously created outlines. So you can see here that training outline that we just made. If I select this outline, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner of the thumbnails, uh, this little teal tab indicating that the students are, are currently in that outline. 
Um, and then again, those settings that we, that we just made will be applied to those students once that outline is applied. Uh, once that outline is no longer needed, we can click on the Remove Outline button to end it.